Which makes better bubbles, cobalt oxide or copper oxide? The answer might surprise you. Hey everybody, Steph here. If you're new to my channel, I am glass fuser 12 years and I like to specialize in beginning to intermediate projects and looking into topics of interest within the glass community. Today's video centers around this stuff. This is cobalt oxide. Cobalt oxide is used by ceramicists to make pigments and glazes that turn out blue. Uh, it's also used by bullseye to make glass. This is cobalt blue glass. But what glass fusers can also use the powder for is bubbles. The question is, are your bubbles gonna turn out this color? So one thing to know about cobalt oxide is unlike copper oxide, which is fairly affordable to get, cobalt oxide is ridiculously expensive. This one pound container I picked up from a ceramic supply runs me about seven or eight times the cost of what it cost me a pound of copper oxide. For those of you that don't buy your copper oxide in bulk, it is still easily two to three times the cost of you buying a regular pound of copper oxide from a ceramic supply. It's not cheap to play with. So I wouldn't recommend grinding out and buying yourself a pound until you watch this video all the way. So I'm going to stop blathering and we're going to get into the process of how I'm going to test cobalt oxide versus copper oxide and copper carbonate. And let's see which one gives the best bubbles. Okay, so in order to test whether or not cobalt oxide makes better or better colored bubbles than copper oxide, we are recreating one of the tests that I have done for both copper oxide and copper carbonate. I have myself one two millimeter piece of glass. This is not a nightlight blank like before, but it's roughly the same size. I'm going to do half the glass lightly and half the glass heavily applied with cobalt oxide. On top of it is going to be two pieces that have been glass tacked together, you can see they're still slightly squidgy, of two millimeter thin, making the entire piece six millimeters thick with a four millimeter cap for the bubbles. That's gonna be test number one. Test number two is gonna compare cobalt oxide to copper oxide and copper carbonate directly, hence why I've got all three containers here. You can see this is copper carbonate. This is copper oxide, badly labeled. My handwriting is terrible. And again, cobalt oxide. What I've done is on this side of the glass, I have split this three inch by three inch triangle into three pieces. I won't say they're equal, but they're close enough. I'm gonna flip it over so the Sharpie doesn't interact. And one side's gonna be cobalt, I think I'm gonna put cobalt on the bottom, copper oxide and copper carbonate, or switch the two, but copper's up here and cobalt on the bottom. That way it interacts with both sides equally, or it doesn't interact, but we can compare on a line more easily. And then I'm going to top with another three millimeter piece and run it through the kiln at the same time as I run this test. That way everything will go through on a full fuse with a bubble squeeze, and we can see exactly how the three play out together and how it applies out, applied thinly and thickly. So we have kind of an idea of both. Uh, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is mix up my cobalt oxide. I'm doing the same test as before using the runny red glass tack and to prevent contamination, I have three brushes here. So each, uh, container has its own brush, there will be no cleaning in between, so there will be no contamination. I've put a little bit of cobalt, copper, and carb carbonate and oxide in these things with a fritz spoon, but I'm going to start with just the cobalt oxide because that's the one we're going to need first. All right, just a little bit of the glass tack gel. Sorry, glass tack. It's the runny stuff. I like the gel better, but you can't always get what you want, and this makes excellent mixer uh, for any of your oxides or carbonates. You can use water, you can use aloe vera, you can use glass tack gel. I mean, you could spit in it if you wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend it. So let's mix that up. See, it's nice and thin now. Probably use too much, but oh well. Got it on my brush. Going to apply thickly, which means it's going to be black. Can we see this? No. 
move those out of the way and push up. By the way, if you're watching this on the day the video debuts, wish me a happy birthday. It is my 44th birthday today. Of course, you're wishing, you're seeing this afterwards, don't worry about it. But yeah, happy birthday to me. I get to go to work tonight. Yay. Oh well, such as being an adult. Okay, that's a fairly thick layer. So what I'm going to use is what's left on the brush and just kind of paint thinly. And if it gets too thick, right up there, I have paper towels. So I can just uh, go up and grab some more. That seems kind of thick. So let me grab some paper towel. Wipe down the brush. Let me get some of the thicker portions out and kind of uniformly light gray this. If you're a bullseye connoisseur, this is kind of an Oregon gray. There we go. So there we go. Let's make this a little straighter. And we'll get to see what it looks like really thin, too. So there we go. That is our thick versus thin application. And there is the topper. Now I'm going to very carefully set this aside. It will go in for a full fuse today. I'm doing hearts, so I will have it in on the kiln with the hearts. They do a standard one hour bubble squeeze. Next. Again, this, as you can see, I'm scratching the Sharpie off, is going face down so it does not interfere with the process. And I'm not gonna use a super thick layer. That looks thick. Let me use it to paint the whole thing so it'll thin out. Even though it's thick, there we go. We'll use the thing up there. But yeah, we'll see how the cobalt oxide works out. I've used it in the past, but it's been a long time. So there's cobalt oxide. This is the brush for cobalt oxide. It's going away. Now we're going to use copper oxide, or copper carbonate. Because that's the one I grabbed. I'm only going to put four drops in this time. And I'm going to save myself the hassle and not cap it because having to chew the lid off each time gets old. Yeah, I know. My mom always told me and my grandmother always told me, don't use your teeth. Use my teeth. It's the advantage of being an adult. So this is copper carbonate. So we're aware it makes smaller bubbles than copper oxide, but bubbles of the same color, probably because they're both copper. So let's get some paint on. That looks pretty good, I think. Not too thick. Some spots are thinner than others, so you'll get a pretty good feeling for how thick versus thin applies. All right. Again, this was the brush, so it and the copper or carbonate are going away. And last, we have the copper oxide, which I will be using more of today because, again, I said hearts, and I've got hearts for my Kickstarter to make. So we will mix and push up. So I realize I keep working off camera. Got a new camera too, so if you like it, tell me what you think. It is an S24. Okay, so we apply. This is pretty thick, so we'll have to cool, thin it down a bit. I know from experience, if you put it on too thick, you're left with black chunks. Okay, so not too bad. Being able to tell these two apart before firing is kind of difficult. That's why I've been careful to keep everything separate. But there we go. And that is the copper oxide. Again, capped. This is three by three. And it's gonna go in for a standard bubble squeeze with my hearts. And we'll see how it comes out on the other side. Okay, so I got the cobalt oxide out of the kiln and it was not what I was anticipating. There's an article I read several years ago, if I can find it again, I'll link it below about somebody who played with copper and cobalt together and their results were different, but this looks like a bubble explosion. 
And that's the thick side. There's your thin side. You can see the thin side has finer bubbles. Notice it doesn't look perfectly smooth. That's because it's not. You can't see real easily on camera. I'm gonna um, like adjust it here, but there's a, this is like over six millimeters and this is like three. You can see here where my finger disappears. I'm moving it to one side because I got a clip on my camera. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see how my finger just disappears here, whereas it doesn't here. There's a big gap, like it blew out right here and blew up in the kiln from the bottom of the kiln. Now, this surface, you can see here, there's some uh, thin fire. It's a little bumpy because I used the floor of my kiln. The floor of my kiln is beat to crap. Um, but there's nothing on the kiln floor to, to explain why I got a lump in it that's, you know, two millimeters, three millimeters high. There's no pile of thin fire. There's no leftover glass. There's nothing like that. There's no raised piece of kiln fl floor. So this is related to the copper oxide. It's kind of interesting. And you can see on this side that it is raised up here if you look carefully. Like I said, I'm not sure how the camera is going to show that. And this is a new camera. Uh, you can see here where I applied it thickly and it did what copper oxide sometimes does and goes black. This was two millimeters on the bottom, a layer of copper or cobalt oxide, and then four layers of clear on top, four millimeters of clear on top, to ensure that the bubbles didn't escape, although this one and that one did try their damnedest. So you're going, well, Steph, how does that compare to copper oxide and copper carbonate? Well, here's cobalt oxide with those two, and it's kind of interesting. So copper carbonate, smaller bubbles, same color as copper oxide. I'm saying these slowly because I will get them mixed up. And here is your cobalt oxide. Um, smaller bubbles, bigger bubbles, so more blue. Definitely a cobalt color. It's pretty. This was definitely applied thinner. I'll get it closer. You can see there's bubbles in it, but they're not as big. They're, all, they're somewhere between copper carbonate and copper oxide. You can see they're kind of in between, but they're thicker. And there's definitely more of a cobalt color to them. So it's kind of interesting. It might be kind of fun to do copper oxide, let it dry, and then do a gentle little squiggle or two of the cobalt through as sort of like uh, streams through the bubbles. Might be fun to play with that. I'm, I'm not real sure. Um, none of the bubbles here broke the surface. You can feel everything is encapsulated. Again, this was three millimeters on three millimeters, so nothing had a danger of breaking through. Um, it's kind of an interesting process. Um, I am going to put what's left of this cobalt oxide in my shop, probably in quarter ounce increments, just because I don't think it's going to be as popular as the copper oxide. We can do lots of things with copper oxide. It's very pretty. Cobalt sort of weird. Um, also because cobalt oxide is expensive. And like I said, I don't think there's going to be as much of a draw. I'll do it in smaller packets. I mean, copper carbonate ends up in smaller packets just because it's fluffy. I mean, this stuff, you end up getting more of it than the copper oxide, but it weighs less. Um, so I'm going to do that and put it in the shop. But it was kind of an interesting experiment. I don't know how much of this I am going to play with personally, just because it it's a few steps as a beautiful color, but when it, like, blows up your kiln, or blows up your glass in your kiln, I mean, I'm not real wild about that. Anyway, thank you for watching. It's kind of an interesting piece, and I'm not real sure what to think about it still. If you've made it this far, I'm going to link um, the video where I compared copper carbonate and copper oxide together so you can get an idea how those two fuse uh, using similar pieces to this and how I feel about them side by side without the copper or cobalt oxide involved. And as always, may the kiln gods uh, bless your fusing.